hello hi everyone uh, so this is the next part of the lecture with regards to complete dentures and the last lecture we had covered the denture trine appointment and what all to check in that and what all corrections need, needed to be done and the last step in denture fabrication is the denture insertion that is the denture placement selective grinding and the post denture instructions that should be given to the you are supposed to evaluate the process denture that is after fabrication you should analyze the fit of the fabricated process after ke keeping it in the patient's mouth you should be able to uh, describe all the steps following denture insertion that is uh, verifying the denture intraoral fit of the denture retention of the denture aesthetics stability and uh, occlusion all these needs to be checked uh, you should also be able to describe what is clinical remounting or uh, what is known as lab mounting and what is selective grinding in relation to denture occlusion you should also be able to give the in elaborate and thorough instructions to the patient after denture insertion because the success of the denture depends a lot on the instructions and what the patient expectations should be you should also educate the patient about maintenance of the processes that is after the denture insertion the daily know how to how to clean the denture how to maintain the denture what all needs to be so the this is probably the most eager and anticipated step especially for you guys the third, final year and the fourth year students because this is probably your first patient that you're doing a, a complete denture for and probably the first interaction with the live patient in prosthodontics so uh, this is a huge step and uh, as a den complete denture fabrication is not for the faint hearted it is a very complex process it, it is not as easy as easy as it is uh, seen or made to believe so you have to be aware of the physical physiological and psychological needs of the patient that need to be addressed with the denture and the appointment involves not only the clinical procedures but proper counseling of the patient about the expectations about the training or getting used to wearing the dentures and how to care for the denture because remember it is a process just like any other processes such as a maybe a missing hand a pro or a process for a missing leg or an, an ocular processes or a ear processes every processes has a lot of psychological and social impact on the patient and uh, it, if done properly it can really help and benefit and improve and enrich the quality of life of the patient so uh, this step is really important so next coming to the denture inspection after the denture acrylization after the deep flasking you remove the dentures you trim polish and finish the dentures in the laboratory that is prior to receiving it in the clinic and at this step you first check the fitting surfaces of the tissue surface of denture for any imperfections such as cracks fissures uh, nodules any sharp edges that may damage the uh, patient's soft tissue and cause pain and discomfort secondly you should expect uh, inspect the borders that they the denture border as i always tell should be like a fish belly they should be rounded from the tissue surface that is the uh, cameo intaglio surface to the cameo surface that is a polished surface they should not be sharp they should not be uh, what you call uh, flat they should be rounded and then thirdly you will ins inspect the cameo surface or the polished surface of the denture that it should be completely smooth they should try to achieve a glassy finish with some amount of uh, gingival characterization and stippling and uh, scalloping uh, if it can be done so and any plaster or dental stone that may be stuck in the interdental embrasures or the gingival margins need to be thoroughly removed at, prior to polishing and next is uh, so this is how a uh, process denture should look like it should have a nice polished glossy surface with proper um, carving and scalloping and stippling of the gingiva so next in comes the intraoral adaptation after you are thoroughly satisfied with the process denture it is ready for insertion in the patient mouth and you need to insert the denture you should you need to inspect the dish fitting surface of the denture whether it has any premature or pressure spots on the patient's uh, residual alveolar ridge and these pressure spots are difficult to uh, find out because unless a patient has already worn the denture for a day or two so one way uh, to uh, identify the these pressure indicating uh, areas or any sharp extensions is by using a pressure indicating paste 
this is first applied using a brush or a cotton bud on the tissue surface of the denture this is a highly viscous material which has thixotropic properties that is it will flow under pressure so then the dentures are inserted in the patient's mouth the patient is asked to bite on the uh, upper and lower complete dentures and then after some time after a minute the denture is removed and inspected for any areas where there is no pressure indicated indicating pressure that is any areas that are exposed like it may be at the border of the retromolar pads or it may be in the alveolingual sulcus or maybe in the anterior uh, or the label under the label flange of the mandibular denture or in the mylohyde area so any of these areas need to be seen they should be marked with a pencil and then the pressure indicating paste, uh, paste is removed and these areas are trimmed or relieved similarly the denture border extensions are also checked so as i mentioned the border peripheries and seals need to be checked if uh, you have taken an accurate secondary impression which is seldom the case in uh, the clinics because you all are learning and uh, it is difficult to get thorough impressions. So denture uh, extension, the flange extension into the vestibules, the relief of the label frenum, the buccal frenums, the telecomandibular raphe and the posterior parietal seal all need to be checked very fine in the patient. Uh, you can use a periodontal probe to place in the patient's vestibule and measure the vestibular depth and then similarly you can also verify it on the dentures using the same periodontal probe or you can just simply insert the denture in the patient mouth and do all the border movements like you do in the uh, secondary impression step and you need to check visually for the relief <coughs> or over extension of the denture borders, denture flanges, all these things in the patient's mouth and anything, uh, any discrepancy should be relieved uh, then and there. So uh, this is the uh, what we are talking about the clinical steps of uh, denture insertion verification and adjustments. So next is we check for attention and stability that is by using a pinch method we try to pull the denture away from the denture bearing area to check if it is retentive and like I mentioned at tie-in appointment we can check the contralateral sites retention or the border seal by placing a finger on the palatal aspect of the canine and then pushing the denture outwards and so this will give you a fair idea about the retention and the stability of the denture so this needs to be uh, checked properly and thoroughly at this step and also uh, we shouldn't panic because sometimes the denture may not be as retentive during the denture insertion appointment but slowly in a matter of three to four days or up to a week the denture settling happens that is the tissue or denture uh, residual alveolar ridges uh, they mold or shape according to the internal tissue surface of the denture because of the real f or the residency like effect and this uh, in many patients this will help in improvement of the retention and stability of the denture so next step also of course we have to check for aesthetics the lip fullness the label full uh, the buccal fullness and the incisor visibility depending on the age of the patient and if the flanges are too thick they should be uh, trimmed and thinned out at this stage Next coming to the occlusion. So this is basically a very important part of uh, denture uh, insertion as faulty occlusion will result in instability of the denture, will result in soreness of the denture bearing area and will result in poor patient compliance. So uh, the causes of occlusal discrepancy could be that there was an error ridge or relationship that is there was slide in centric, centric and maximum interthespation do not coincide and this you fail to check this at the trying appointment. Also, it could also be due to the errors in mounting. That is, while on mounting on the articulator, there was some uh, displacement or shifting of the models with the wax rims, and this would also produce errors, changes in the supporting tissues because the models that cast are made of gypsum, they are hard, whereas the denture tissues are soft and uh, uh, you know covered by mucous membrane and connective tissue. So because of the settling of the denture, some errors in occlusion are definitely noted in the patients. So and in uh, some patients, there may be flabby tissues or knife edge uh, ridges or bone resorption in certain areas that may cause the um, shifting and tilting of the denture base that is not actually visible to the eye, but it could result in errors in the occlusion. 
So these need to be verified and the correction either can be done clinically by placing the dentures in the mouth and then in they verifying and adjusting the uh, denture occlusal prematurities by selective gravity. Or a more predictable method is what we call as a clinical mounting or a lab remount. So here in the clinical correction it is fairly easy. You place an articulating paper bilaterally on all the posteriors that is bicuspids and the molars and you take a bite in the centric and then you tell patient to do eccentric movements and you see whether all the teeth have uniform bite marks or the uh, markings from the articulating paper because if uh, all the teeth are markings that means your BD is correct and uh, the markings for the mandibular posterior should be on their buccal cusps and on the maxillary teeth it should be on their uh, what do you call the parietal cusps. So these uh, if this is not the case then the, like here um, heavy occlusal contacts are seen on the maxillary uh, posterior but on the buccal cusp which we do not want so this needs to be adjusted by selective grinding using acrylic trimming burrs and uh, this can be done uh, as I mentioned using articulating paper or by using softened wax and asking patient to bite in the softened wax and wherever the wax is perforated those areas are marked and they are selectively ground. We also have special articulating papers uh, which are u-shaped for easy uh, adjustment or ease of uh, uh, you know, correction of the occlusal premature securities which can also be used. So, uh, so what are the disadvantages of interval correction? See, the interval correction is a very straightforward and simple and quick step that can be done then and there at a chair side. But because of the resiliency and displacement of the supporting tissue that is soft tissue under the denture, some premature contacts may not be visible at that time. And of course, it is not possible to observe all the discrepancies uh, throughout the arch because of the poor visibility in the patient's mouth, the presence of saliva and uh, uh, occlusal interferences can cause pain which may make the patient uh, avoid that side. So the patient may, if the patient suppose is having pain on the left side on the retromolar pad or on the tuberosity area, then he may not uh, bite uh, properly on the left side and may, he may try to shift his mandible to the right side and you may get uh, occlusal uh, heavy contacts or discrepancies more on the right side. So, but this would actually not be the case if, if this uh, discrepancies are being checked uh, using a clinical mounting procedure. So next, ne the next procedure is the extraoral clinical remounting procedure. So in this procedure, basically what you do is you insert the dentures in the patient mouth. You first uh, relieve all the painful areas or any overextensions and all those things. And then when you are ready to check for the occlusion, you take uh, interocclusal bite between the upper and lower complete dentures and then you do a phase bow transfer for and then using the phase bow transfer the upper maxillary denture is mounted on the articulator or if you already have existing or duplicate models of the patient uh, the cast and you can just uh, place the dentures on those cast and do the remounting using a phase bow transfer then using interocrosal record the mandibular denture is also mounted and then the balancing and selective grinding of the contacts of the occlusal uh, prematurities is so the basic role here is called bull that means buccal upper and low lingual lower so basically the in the as i mentioned earlier the parietal cusps in the maxillary are the primary cusps or the holding cusps and in the mandible they are the buccal cusps so these cusps should not be modified because you will then be altering the vertical dimension of occlusion and you will disturb the centric and the balancing contact. So that's why you have to modify the opposing cusp. That is in the maxilla, you will adjust the buccal cusp. In mandible, you will adjust the lingual cusp. That's why it's called the bull law. So next, uh, after occlusal discrepancies and selective grinding is done, you're satisfied. And then you have to give the post denture instruction, uh, uh, denture insertion instruction. That is, how the denture should be inserted and removed, what all the patients should expect from the dentures. Patients should have a realistic expectation that a denture is a prosthesis, it is not their natural teeth and they have a lot of limitations and they take time to get adapt adapted to. So the, all these things should be explained to the patient. Of course, you have to share the post-care instructions with the patient. 
so so they should tell the patient that initially the he'll have a awkward feeling a feeling of heaviness feeling of foreign body there will be excess salivation his appearance will be changed he is not used to seeing his face like this because he has been edentulous for a long time his cheeks and lips have lost their tonicity and now suddenly he feels lip fullness cheek fullness and the facial features they change so and his speech will be slurred and altered because of the palatal uh, vault of the denture and the lingual phalanges of the lower dentures and because of the placement of the teeth uh, on the on or facial to the ridges so this will alter his speech and it will take some time to get trained to uh, these things so patient should be advised to read a magazine or a newspaper and talk uh, practice to talk by Uh, looking in the mirror so that he can get adapted better because tongue is a very resilient muscle which has a very good memory and it can be trained very easily to the speech pattern of the new denture of course if there has some serious issues like pronunciation of sibilants uh, labor dental sound lingual dental sound bilabial sounds these need to be corrected in the denture but other than that speech it will fairly return to normal and uh, as i mentioned there will excess salivary flow so all these issues will slowly resolve over time patient should give at least 3 to 4 weeks to get adjusted to dentures he cannot be impatient and cannot be unrealistic in his expectations of the dentist and the denture so eating now this is one of the major reasons that patients seek treatment for the denture fabrication that they are unable to eat solid foods and their health has uh, taken a uh, uh decline so that's why you need to advise patients that they need to train first in order to be able to chew and eat properly so this will usually take 6 to 8 weeks for him to be comfortable initially patient should start with soft diet like anything which is non fibrous non chewy uh, and does not require too much effort and any food that patient is eating whether it is a uh, pizza or whether it is uh, uh, apple uh, banana or any kind of fruit they need to be cut into small bite size pieces and should be eaten with a spoon and fork and the patient cannot bite directly into uh, uh, the food like he used to with his natural teeth so and the tissues first need to get used to the feel of the denture the pressure from the denture because you remember the pressure is being transported from the denture to the denture bearing mucosa um, and then from there it is transmitted to the underlying residual valve which so this uh, uh, is bound to create some soreness uh, ulceration and uh, discomfort and pain. so after all these things are done recall is done and patient uh, dentures are adjusted uh, you also need to give care instructions like hygiene is of paramount importance the dentures need to be brushed every day and cleaned every day just like you would your natural teeth but the difference being that dentures should be cleaned with a soft denture brush and not with a hard bristle brush and not with toothpaste but they should be cleaned with a mild soap or uh, uh, a soap a liquid soap or soap wash so and the next thing is the dentures should always be uh, cleaned thoroughly with uh, water and uh, preferably a cleansing agent such as denture cleansers like all nowadays all the dent the product manufacturing companies they make uh, denture cleansing tablets or denture cleansing uh, solutions so basically uh, the denture should be occasionally placed in a water bath containing a commercial grade uh, denture cleansing tablet such as which are mainly contain sodium perborate and denture usually can be left from half an hour to overnight but it is preferable that uh, dentures not be kept overnight uh, although i have written here overnight but it is preferable because to not keep the dentures overnight but half an hour is more than enough for the cleaning of the dentures so another thing is that and even in spite of cleaning the dentures thoroughly over the years the denture may attract calculus and um, tartar and other deposits so these can be removed by placing the dentures overnight in uh, white vinegar that is the regular uh, synthetic vinegar which we get in the store shelves and this will help in uh, dissolving the calculus deposits so this is with respect to denture care instructions because uh, remember proper if proper care is not taken then it will result in gastroenteritis candidiasis and inflammatory papillary hyperplasia and all these uh, conditions that affect the oral mucosa so as i mentioned recall should be done first 
recall is done within the first couple of days that is first 24 to 72 hours and then second recall is done preferably after a week and usually patient will not have any complaint after the second visit but if you desire or may, uh, want a third recall can be kept at three to four months and yearly patient should come for the checkup and uh, uh, a thorough examination usually dentures need to be replaced every five years or at least they should be relined every five years owing to the continuous resorption of the residual alveolar ridges underneath so with this we come to an end and uh, in summary denture insertion appointment is very important i don't need to stress the how important this step is and this is the culmination of all your efforts of the previous uh, four to five appointments that uh, you have been uh, doing and time spent by the dentist in this appointment will go a long way towards the success of the denture because you see a denture patient is like a, uh, i would like to compare a denture patient is like a psychiatric appointment you know uh, you're not only giving uh, processes to the patient but you're changing his life you're changing his quality of life you're changing his smile you're rehabilitating him just like a prosthetic leg or a prosthetic hand rehabilitates a handicapped person you are rehabilitating them so with these things with rehabilitation comes many social and psychological issues and all these need to be gently addressed in each appointment and in the final appointment the expectations the uh, the training involved all this should be discussed with the patient so that he is aware of all these things and he is motivated and he is patient to uh, overcome all these odds and have a successful denture because just success of a denture is not just uh, in the hands of a dentist but uh, both the dentist and the patient uh, determine the success of a complete denture processes or for that matter any oral rehabilitation procedure so thank you all